name is Vahid Chitsos, Par Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning, this afternoon. Introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, I'm Renee Tate. I'm a divorce coach from Australia, and I help people who um, uh, have been through a divorce to overcome the pain and challenges and get on with living their best life after divorce. Awesome. So is it better not to get married in the first place or get married and then end it? I'm a big believer in love and marriage, actually. So I, um, I also help people design and create their dream life after divorce and create their dream relationship as well after divorce because um, I think everyone deserves to have love and um, that's what deep down everyone wants. So would you say marriage is a dictatorship system or is it a democracy? Uh, <laughs> uh, definitely a democracy. So, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't know how it is in your household. My household is... My wife says what to do, everybody else follows, and that tends to keep everything in check. Is there it something else like that I should know? To me. <laughs> sounds like a good system. I think um, we all have different relationships, but um, yeah, sadly, not all of them last, but um, we can definitely start again and make it even better the next time around. So here's, so let's get serious. What are the top three causes of divorce, in your opinion, based on your experience so far? What are the top three? I think the, the biggest thing is usually people have subconscious patterns going on. So often we're playing out our subconscious patterns, whether that is relationships don't last, they may have beliefs around, I can't um, trust men or women will hurt me. So you, often these things are happening at the deeper subconscious level and that's what people come to me for so that I can make those changes for them very quickly and they can get different results for their life and their future. Uh, I think the other things are things like um, maybe they, they settled to start with or they might have just um, not got what they really wanted in that, that relationship. So I'm, I help people consciously attract the right relationship and get everything that they want for their future. Um, so that they don't have to go through that again. And I guess sometimes people just outgrow a situation and a relationship. And, and that's quite normal as well. Just because we made that decision at the age of 21 um, doesn't mean that that's going to be our path forever. So it's okay if we sometimes we have to outgrow that and to take our life to another level as well. So uh, I think that's definitely the three biggest reasons in my experience. <laughs> Do you have an optimal age that individuals should look at marriage? Is it, I mean, because my mom got married when she was young. She had me when she was like 20. So, and that worked out okay. But then I had my baby way older. So I'm just thinking like, what is, is there optimal number that we could go off? Do we know like 18, 19 is too early? And do we know 50 is too old? I don't know. What is the number? I don't think it's an age thing as such. I think we definitely grow and develop as people and growth is so important. So sometimes I suppose that's what happens. People stop growing in their relationship or they stop growing as a couple. So having a shared vision and shared common values is really important. So I do help people get very clear about what they want in a partner. So I think it's about awareness to start with and consciously attracting and creating what you want. So First of all, knowing what that is, and I think it's good if you know yourself and what's important to you. So then get really clear about what you want in, a, in your perfect partner and relationship and then um, doing using the tools to get that. So that's a big part of that. And then as a couple, I think it's about growing together, keep developing, have shared visions, make sure you've got shared values to start with. And then it's really about just um, giving it everything that you can to make it work. So uh, obviously we all want everything to last and our relationships to last. But if you're going through a divorce, it's also how you manage that, which makes a big difference uh, to your children and your family and things like that. So it doesn't have to be the end. It can actually be the start of a whole new life for you. And uh, the people I work with want to take their life to a whole new level after going through a divorce. So is there a perfect person or you find a person and then you make it perfect? <laughs> uh, I think that I think it's an abundant universe. OK, so I think that there's um, there's someone definitely for everyone. And I, I think it's about getting clear about what you really want in a person. And then the universe comes to to play to work with you to get that. So 
Um, those things, obviously, we're working at a different level in that regard. But um, I think just having clarity, clarity has power. So most people go about their life just sort of um, a little bit conscious, but not really clear about what they really want. And sometimes people come to me and they go, I'm really clear about well, what no, I want. No, because that's not easy to do. It's not an easy thing to do to get clarity. I've been trying to try to get clarity for 39 years, and I, I don't even think I got it down. So when yeah. you say you got to get clarity, I don't know what you mean. It's not well, easy to do. Well, look, I, I help people. I say, look, write your list. What are your must? What do you really want? And come from your heart. So, um, and how do you want to feel in your relationship? So I help them write a new story for their new love story. And then we clear all those things that might be sabotaging them from having that. So they're the things like beliefs and um, different patterns that they're playing out. But usually they're invisible blocks that they, they know that they're not getting the result they want, but they don't always know why. And that's why they come to me to help them get the results that they do want. So um, I think we, all, we can all get clear about what we want and then we get to consciously create our life and in all areas. So, okay, so Renee, what gives you the authority to talk about it? Have you gone through a divorce yourself or no? Yes, I have. Um, I was with my husband for 19 years and I have two beautiful children. So that was um, the inspiration for me moving more into this field in coaching. And uh, so now it's my mission to help people who have been through a divorce because I absolutely know how, how painful and challenging it can be on many levels. But um yeah, it doesn't have to be the end. It can be an amazing new beginning. And um, that's what I help people with and to overcome all that pain. So, so Renee, so for those 19 years, who was suffering? Was it you or him? <laughs> oh, look, I think we, we had a great... Um, I just, I just want to find that guy and do an interview with him. I want to say, listen, <laughs> was it Renee's fault or was it your fault? But you know what? We got to thank him because if it wasn't because of him, you would have never became a divorce coach. So That's you right. got to be nice to him, Renee. Be nice to him. Yes, absolutely. Well, we have children together, so we're doing the best job we can in that way. And look, I think sometimes the universe forces changes on us in the end. And I always say to people, first you get the tickle of the feather. You know, you need to make a change with whatever area of your life. And you hear people talking, I want to make a change. And they're not. So they get that little tickle of the feather. And then if they don't listen to that, they sort of get the brick through the window, like, come on. And that's the universe saying you need to make some changes. And I always say, um, you know, get in before you get hit by the bus, um, metaphorically speaking, obviously. But you don't want to leave it to that point where life steps in and forces things in the end. And often that's what happens. And it can be a lot more painful when, um, when it gets to that point. So... So my question is this. I, I, I am very careful with the words that I want to choose. At what point do you throw the towel in and you say this shit is not working out? My only problem is, my only challenge is, how do we determine that that is the real point or is it you just gave up on working on it? Because those are two different things. If someone is abusing you, doing this, doing that, that, I have no room for that. I got no tolerance for that. They got to go. I don't care if it's the wife or the husband or the boyfriend. They got to go. But at what point do you know that you have not contributed enough in this communion where it could work out, but you're not showing up to work at it? How do you know that? I don't know. Did I... I don't know. Did I say yeah. that right? Yeah, look, I, I completely understand. And that's a big question. And that's, I work with people more who are already going through a divorce or, or who have been through a divorce. So it's a big decision to make. So I don't, I mean, if someone comes to me for help around that, I say, look, I work with you to get you stronger and clear about what you want, because it is a big decision to make. So you obviously want to make sure that you've looked at other avenues, you've done everything that you can to make it work. And I guess it's just a personal choice at that point, whether, you know, someone decides to make that break. So it's, it's one of those things in life that I think sometimes people do it and then they have regret. And, um, and that can be a big thing that people struggle with or they have guilt. Uh, so particularly if you have children as well, it's a much, you know, it's a big decision either way. So it's um, something that I think as a person, it's about working on yourself 
uh, being the best version of you, getting clear about what is it, your own inner truth, and then, um, you know, making the decision that you need to for your life at that point. So it's, it's a bit of a million dollar question, I think. <laughs> so Renee, you don't help people get divorced. You don't put them on that path. You don't suggest to them that they need to separate, do you? No, I don't like to do that at all. So I'm very much about getting that person as the reconnecting with their true self. So when you know, when you're connected with yourself, you have all the answers. So a lot of the time, there's just a lot of turbulence and things going on in people's mind, and they just can't get clear about that. So I help them get strong and confident and, and connected to themselves so they can make the right decision for them. But I absolutely don't really, I don't specialize in that part of it because for me, I, I think it's a really big decision and I'm a big advocate for people staying together. So, um, but unfortunately it doesn't always work out that way. And the people that go through it, it's a really painful journey. It's very challenging and they definitely need help to clear the big emotions, to get their confidence and strength back and to get clear about what do I want for my future so that they can make the rest of their life even better than ever. So that's what I specialize in. So Renee, my question is this, let's be real. I see all divorced ladies always together and the chances are if there's one in there that's married, that got into the group by accident, chances are within the next couple of years, that one person is going to join the club. So you're telling me that is not the case. Look, I think that we become... No, I mean a yes or no question, Renee. Don't dodge the, don't dodge the question. It's a simple yes or no. In your personal opinion, you don't think that what you think that one married person among 10 people that are divorced could hold it together <laughs> look i think they could go either way because they might hear all these horror stories and go you know what i really want to make sure i don't go through that so in life i think we can go either way but we obviously become a product of our environment and if we're um, you know, we know that we become who we, hang, you know, spend most of our time with. So I guess there is a chance of that. But I, I think they may go, you know what, my life's pretty good. And I don't want to sort of put myself through that. So it's, um, it's not an easy journey at times, but it, it can definitely have to be as hard as what it is for people if they get the right help through it. Renee, you help more females or more males? Actually, it's a real combination of both because uh, men really do need the help as well. And often they don't, they don't talk about it as much that they're needing that help. So uh, I think it's, it's devastating, Renee. We don't want to talk about it. It was our high school sweetheart and yeah. she took a knife. She stabbed my heart and you want me to talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. And they don't always have friends and people that they can, they don't sort of get the help as much. So what is your recommendation to those people? Who should they talk to? Because I'm probably not the best person if they talk to me because I'll be like, drop it, go get a new one, done deal. That's it. I'm just always like, listen, that's the shortest, fastest, it will cost you less. If it's already got to that point that you're thinking about it, just let it go. So I'm not the best person that they should talk to. So who should they go to? Do they go to their mom, dad, parents, grandparents, brother, sister, mother-in-law, father-in-law? Who should they go to? Look, I think unless you've been through a divorce, it's very, you really don't understand what's going on for people because it hits people on so many levels all at once. It's emotionally, um, financially, physically, um, you know, mentally. It's just a lot of things to deal with at once. So I do think getting the right help from a professional uh, is important because otherwise, you know, friends and family can mean really well, but they're only giving advice based on their experiences and they may not know what you're going through. Um, and they can't help you clear those big emotions and things that are sitting at the subconscious level. So it's, um, I think it's just getting the right support and the right help and not being ashamed to talk about it because I think sometimes people think they've failed if they've gone through a divorce and that's certainly not the case. Um, so it's, um, it's really important to not feel like you've failed in any way. Um, you can still be a great parent. My children are thriving and um, they're, you know, they're very excited and happy for me because they've seen me absolutely shine after going through that. So it's So, Renee, you don't call it a failure? What do you call it? Oh, look, I think it's just it's a change. It's a life change and it's, um, it's a process. Renee, if I get a business partner and we're business partners, 
and we have to file for bankruptcy and separate. In the business world, we call it failure. So you're telling me my relationship is, so what is it called? You call it a change, but I don't know if that's the right word that I would use. I think but it's failure really doesn't need to be, it could be a good thing. Absolutely. Look, it, it, and it's one of those things that it's going to either make or break you. So you may as well let it make you and go, you know what, whatever happened has happened. It's in the past. All I can do now is make the best of my life for the future and for my children. So that's what I, I really get people to focus on because looking backwards is not going to change it. And all you can do is learn the lessons and make sure you don't repeat that again in the future. And sometimes those things are sitting at a level that's hard for people to change on their own. But I think sometimes men have a tendency to want to just fill that gap. And it's important to do the work on yourself first so that you don't end up repeating that pattern down the track. And then you can have the success longer term. I, I, I don't know where, don't quote me on this. I read it somewhere that they said like 80% of the divorces had to do with finances, financial stuff. Then it was like 15% that had to do with mother-in-law, father-in-law's family circumstances, and 5% was sex. So my question to you is this, based on you seeing it, I know you don't have the exact statistics on it, but you're in the front line, you're dealing with this, you know, more often than all of other ones. Is that true? Or is that, does that feel like it could be the right numbers or around the same numbers? Look, I think it's it's hard to say exactly because the people that come to me may be going through a, a range of different things and there seems to be an age group that are, are, are really just um, going through changes in themselves. They want something different for their life. Maybe their partner isn't growing with them anymore. So, look, I think finances and things like that definitely put a lot of stress and strain on a relationship. So that might be eroding that in a different way but it, you know people don't sort of come to me and say I'm leaving because of the financial situation I think they're the things that just can take away from the joy and happiness and um, that love over time if there's a lot of pressure and stress in different ways okay and how many percent what would you say is, is there a number of individuals where the divorce is happening because somebody's cheating on them or because of that also too, or no, or that you're not dealing with that. Because when you said they're not growing with them, what do you mean they're not growing with them? Are you talking about mindset or we're talking about the guys leaving the wife for a, a, a much cuter, better looking, mm -hmm. younger wife? Is that what I mean? Like, are they not growing in that sense? Why are you laughing, Renee? This is a serious <laughs> question. Oh, Why absolutely. are you laughing? No, it's, um, it's, look, I think that the, obviously those things happen in relationships. I think also um, there's a lot of women particularly that I think seem to find their confidence and get to a point where they've raised their children and they might go, you know what, I want something more for their life. So that's, that's that change that I was talking about. I think it's, it's a big life transition. Um, absolutely, there's people that are doing the wrong thing and cheating and, and then it's sort of forced on them. They, they may not, you know, they feel like that happened to me. So it's a combination. Often it's the women that make the decision. It's not just that the women that are being left because their husband's doing something. It's a real combination of both. And Yeah, um, Renee, all guys are angels. We got no <laughs> fault in it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely look i think um there's a lot of um great people out there who and look that dating journey and finding new love again can be a bit daunting as well for people and navigating that new world particularly when you haven't been doing that for maybe 20 years so um that's that's a whole um, part of the journey as well so it's um it, but it's a, it's a really common thing to go through a divorce and it's more common than what people realize but just because it's common doesn't make it any easier. It still can be a very challenging time. I also, based on my research, personal research has, there's no basis for it. Just, I have just been looking around. I feel like a lot of successful men build their businesses with their partner, but their partner and themselves have gone through a lot of shit sometimes the partners can't let go and be moved on to the new phase of their lives, to their success life, money, everything else is there. 
they still hold on to the historical vision that they got. So one of the key elements that you see so many successful people all over the globe, they get the success, then they leave the partner that went through all of the shit with them to make it, and then they go get a new girl. Yeah. And I think, based on my research, is that with the new girl, they don't have to be reminded of all the crap that they've gone through, or they don't have to get reminded from their partner all the crap that they had to go through to make it. So it's like a clean slate, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So now you left all of that you know, behind, and then you just go with the new girl, new girl, new wife, new girlfriend, whatever they can, new husband, new wife. They don't come with the baggage. I think Is that a true statement? The grass can look greener on the other side, but they may not be factoring in. Renee, the- sometimes it is greener on the. <laughs> the wife was the wife was fifty. I found someone who's forty. The grass is greener. And look, often that is the catalyst for that can sometimes be that they're thinking. So they might have grown their business, for example, and thinking, when I get to that point, then I'll be happy. Okay, so it's this chasing this happiness type of thing, and they get to that point and go, you know what? I'm still not. I'm not happy. So they they then think I need something else. And maybe it's, you know, a younger wife or something like that. But often what they do is they might do that journey and realize that, you know what, that actually isn't what's made me happy. So it's really important to do the work on yourself. And I, I help people um, stop chasing that, that happiness thing and, and looking outside of themselves because that we we live in a, a bit of a culture like that. When I get that car, then I'll be happy. When I get that house, whatever that is. And, you know, happiness is a state. And I think it's just finding that in, in yourself first so that you don't really need that from outside things. And then those things are just a bonus. But I think that there's probably a lot of that in it as well. Um, and they may realize when they get that, that, you know what, I, I'm not necessarily any happier. And now I've got to deal with kids and an ex-wife and all the things that come with that as well. Renee, you should have been a good, you would have made a good politician. You dodge all my bullets <laughs> at hard, hardcore. You, I've never seen anybody dodge bullets like this. It's cool. <laughs> it's all right. I, I, I'm going to ask away anyway, but yeah, I can't get you to I do this every day. <laughs> You're like, I'm a professional. I do this every day. (laughs) So do you need to be a good politician to keep a marriage together? I think you have to be very diplomatic, absolutely, and objective. And, um, yeah, I think that definitely helps. And be able to take responsibility for your part in things. I'm a big big believer in that because um, we're all creating our, our experiences. So... I think sometimes people like to blame someone else and, and it, you know, it's, it's never good. Really? Sometimes they are at their fault. You should blame <laughs> them sometimes. What are you talking about? Sometimes they should be blamed. You know, you, you want, it's cool. It's cool. So here's my question. My grandfather always used to say that in a household, it's the wife that keeps the marriage together. So the day she decides that this marriage got to go, it's going to go. Is that true based on your experience? I mean, that's an old saying. I know they said that in certain cultures that might be the case. Is that the case? As long as the wife wants it or is holding it together, it can be held together? Look, I think that the feminine energy is very nurturing and, and that's, that's the, the traditional, that is our, our nature. And I think that, that that energy is very important. So, women, and, you know, sometimes that's overlooked how important that is because it, that allows their partner to go and grow the business and do whatever. So it's a real partnership. And um, I think that, yeah, women play a very important part in, in keeping a relationship together for that reason. Uh, and I think sometimes it's that confusion about that masculine and feminine energy and people now have got a little bit lost in that so there's nothing wrong with being keeping that beautiful feminine energy doesn't mean that you have to be weak you can still be very strong with that but you know and and, you know most women we like the contrast so that's what creates chemistry and sometimes the man's lost a bit of that you know their natural energy or the woman stepped into being the boss and and then they go, wow, why don't we have any uh, chemistry or attraction? So it's not necessarily based on the actual gender 
but we definitely need a combination of that masculine and feminine energy to make a relationship work. And when you can really understand that and step into that, you can make, you can keep that passion alive and, and keep the relationship in a really good place, knowing how to do that. Are more people, do you feel like people that have, People that are employees get more divorced or people that are entrepreneurs get more divorced? Uh, look, I, I, can't, I can't say a, an exact figure on that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that that's the, the telltale sign. Um, yeah, I think... No, I mean, I, I was just thinking, like, is it, is it more like... Because you got to look. I mean, it's not easy if, if you're a housewife, husband goes out, yeah. does business gets bullets every day, comes back home. You know, I, I think the, under, the tolerance and the understanding level needs to be a lot more um, on one part more than the other. But the opposite is also true too, you know. So I think communication. So do you teach people communication skills? Because I think that's what it comes down to. Because if, if sex is only a smart part, listen, my mom and dad, anytime they have fights, has nothing to do with sex. Yeah. My dad never complains that, oh, when I kiss your mom, the kissing is not good or her lips are not good. That is not the case. That is not what I hear. Most of the time it's communication barriers. So yeah. shouldn't that be in a standard procedure for our society to teach people? Because, I mean, we're leaving a lot to chances. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't comprehend that. And I don't agree with that, that us, I mean, who teaches us how to be in a good marriage? Or how do we know what a good marriage looks like? Because a lot of times it's outside. It's so funny. I just feel like I was violated last week. Let me tell you why. So I see these gurus. I'm not going to mention their name because I think they should be ashamed of themselves for lying and deceiving a lot of followers. But I'm not going to mention their names. So they come out and they say, yeah. We've been having challenges for the past three years, so we decided to call it an end, and we want to divorce, separate this. Cool, no problem. But then I'm like, that's bullshit, because a month ago, for the past three years, you've been putting pictures with the husband showing the happy face. So I'm like, so there is a lie going on in here. It's your business life. I don't care what you do with it. But don't, don't come to me and say it's been going on for three years, but you use the guy to show yourself and your picture showing happy face to everybody else for the past three years. Yeah. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. If there was a problem, there was a problem past three years, why didn't you say so? Or just say, you know, lie to us just like you did before. Just say, you know what, last month we decided to separate, you know? So I feel like, I don't know, too many bullshit going on. I'm calling it out on <laughs> yeah, look, I think, um, yeah, I mean, it's a bit of the world we live in sometimes and it's all about, you know, unfortunately how, how you know, we look and things like that. But it's, um, yeah, I think, yeah, absolutely. Be real. If you're having issues, don't go painting a different picture and don't believe everything you see on social media because sometimes those people that are doing that the most are often because they're, it's a distraction for them because they don't actually want to sit there and have a conversation with their partner at dinner. They're sitting, you know, doing something else. So uh, I think the lockdown's been interesting because people can't be distracted with all these other things. Oh, totally. The ratio of divorce is just going to go up. Oh, you're going to get a lot of clients because of this COVID-19 because they have to stay together for that extra nine, 10 hours that weren't there before. So I I, I could tell you in LA, ratio of divorce is just going to go up because... Some people realize, oh, my God, I shouldn't be in this relationship. So. Absolutely. And people can distract themselves for 20 years going, I'll just keep working on my business. And really, they're, they're, they're not really wanting to face the real issues. So at some point, though, as I said, it's, the universe will force it in the end where you actually have to go, you know what, I can't keep running away from this. I have to address this. And, and that's, that's just the way that, you know, that's the way it works. So... Um, either either fix it and do the work to fix it or make a decision to change it and, and make sure that you do that in the best way possible. So, Renee, why not become a marriage counsellor and put people together because with your experience, 
you're like, no, this guy is not good for you. Or no, this girl is good for you. Can't you be a good matchmaker now that you have that skill? Look, absolutely. I mean, I think for me, I'm very passionate about helping people who have been through a divorce because I was already coaching and, and, and healing and doing different things before I went through my divorce. But after going through that, I absolutely went, you know what? I, I hate to think that people are in that pain and struggling. And um, so I've, it's a very important thing to me to help people through that. And um, it's, you know, it's something that unless, as I said, unless you've been through it, you don't really understand it. It's a, it, there's a real loss that goes with that. And it's a big life change. So I, I like to hold people's hands through that and help them get the very best outcome for their life and their future after that. So do you have a course on how to keep your marriage together so they don't have to come to you? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> I'll work on Why it. Why not? That's the number one course we need. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, look, I mean, I think we all specialize in different things for a reason. And as a, you know, maybe I was put on this path for that reason and, and went through that so that I could help other people through that as well. So uh, that's what I'm very passionate about. And, it's um it, there's a big need out there absolutely so how do people renee how do people find you uh either on my instagram page um renee tate divorce life coach or on facebook um renee tate uh life divorce and life coach or um renee tate.com.au on my website uh, i've Listen, got a five day think. i've got a five day divorce reboot challenge happening next week actually and that's a free Five day um, program on on Facebook, so that's the Divorce Reboot Challenge Facebook page. If anyone would like to jump on and and reboot themselves in their life, love it. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Um, hopefully, you won't hold any of the questions against me. Uh, these were the questions that were given to me by somebody else. I had nothing to do <laughs> with them. <laughs> I had I nothing. To do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great fun. Thank you so much for having me. You got it. Stay safe out there. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Okay. Talk to you Bye. Bye -bye. Thank you.